what's going on guys? Uh, today, uh, video is going to be a little bit different than normal. Uh, this ain't going to be tech related at all, so if that's all you're here for, if you just want a headphone review or whatever, I am sorry, but you could go ahead and leave this video right now if that's what you're looking for. Uh, otherwise, I, I wanted to, to share this with, with everybody just mainly because I have I don't know if I want to call it an expertise, but I do have a certain experience with buying and selling jewelry, uh, more specifically gold and diamonds. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to to help anybody out there that is potentially uh, thinking about buying jewelry for uh, their significant other, spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever, uh, for Valentine's Day, and. To be a little bit more specific, I want to help you buy in used jewelry. And when I say used, I'm not meaning from Craigslist or anything like that. I'm more meaning from like a pawn shop or someone that sells things secondhand, you know, like a pawn shop. And the reason why I want to do this is because very few people will tell you this and especially anybody at a jewelry store will not tell you this but jewelry in general is incredibly overpriced uh, at the retail level. As far as the retail value of, I'm kind of going to stick with gold and diamonds. As far as the retail value of that goes, it is severely, severely inflated by almost any jewelry store that you go to. It doesn't really matter what their name is. I ain't going to name any. You probably already know some that you're thinking of off the top of your head but they are all gonna be insanely, insanely overpriced, which is why buying jewelry from a pawn shop actually makes sense. Now, there's a couple things that you gotta know, though, uh, so you don't get taken for however much money that you're gonna spend, and I'm hoping to clear that up for you as, as we go along through this video. A couple of things to look out for. Number one, if you are gonna go to a pawn shop, Try and find one that you feel you can trust. Um, a pawn shop that's been open for decades. Uh, someone that's built a reputation wherever it is that you may be. Or even a pawn shop that has multiple locations. Uh, those are probably your better bets. Um, they're not going to try as much <laughs> to take you for your money. And I kind of made that face because some might still. Uh, but... For the most part, if they have, um, if they've been in business for a long time and they have multiple uh, locations across your city, then chances are that they they know what they're doing and they're not going to try and take you for a ride. They might try and overcharge a little bit, but you're still going to end up paying a lot less than you would pay in a jewelry store. A couple of things that you can look for when you are are looking at jewelry. Um, we'll kind of start with diamonds and then we'll go uh, on to gold afterwards. There's no real 100% surefire way, at least in a pawn shop, to test the authenticity of a diamond. There are a few things that you can look for, uh, and the number one thing that I will tell anybody out there looking for a diamond used secondhand in a pawn shop, whatever it is, if it looks too perfect, chances are it is not a diamond. Uh, it could either be a moissanite, it could be a cubic zirconia, whatever, but if it looks too, too perfect, flawless there's a very very good chance that it is not a real diamond now if you are somewhere and they're telling you uh, a pawn shop and they're telling you yes this is a real diamond this is blah 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 if it is that nice of a diamond there is about a 99 percent chance that it is a registered diamond and what that means is that it has been looked at by people that actually authenticate diamonds Nine times out of ten, they will put a serial number in what's called the girdle of a diamond. Now, I will have a picture, and I'll, I'll put it up up here for you, and, and I'll show you the different parts of a diamond. You don't really need to know them all, um, but I reference the girdle because that's where the serial number of the diamond will be, and you will need a jeweler's loop to see it. You won't be able to see it with your naked eye, and you're going to have to turn the diamond uh, until you can actually see it somewhere. That kind of brings me into another point is either get yourself a jeweler's loop. They are not very expensive. Uh, about 15 bucks should be enough. All it really is is a little magnifying glass and I should have grabbed mine, but I left it upstairs. But it's just a little magnifying glass. I'll probably throw a picture up here of that too. 
Uh, some of them could get a little fancier, you know, 20, 30 bucks, and they have lights on them, which not a bad idea if you're looking at diamonds. Uh, but they'll have lights on them, or you don't have to have one with lights, or they have one with two different types of magnification. It gets a little intense. If you don't want to buy a jeweler's loop, chances are, if you go to a, a pawn shop, they will probably have one, because they have to have one to, to inspect the diamonds anyways. So just ask them if you can borrow theirs. Chances are they're not going to tell you no. When you have the, the loop in your hands, uh, a couple things to look for in the diamond. Uh, number one are inclusions. Now inclusions are basically going to look like... Um, if you've ever seen, if you've ever, ever had a broken windshield or broken glass, that's kind of what it'll look like inside the diamond. Doesn't mean that it's chipped or anything, it just means that there's an inclusion in the diamond that does bring the value down. Most of your diamonds are gonna have little bits of carbon in there. Uh, you sometimes won't be able to see them with the naked eye, sometimes you will. That also will bring down the value of that diamond. And there are a range of colors, and it mostly just goes for from clear to yellow. And when I say yellow, I don't mean that real fancy looking yellow diamond that you've seen at the jewelry store and I'll get to that in a minute too uh, but it's it's kind of like a <laughs> this is gonna sound kind of gross but it's it's like a clear to a sort of pea type yellow <laughs> I know that sounds gross but uh, and and you want to know that because if it if it really ranges anywhere outside of that color spectrum as in clear to getting a little more cloudy and a little more yellow if it goes to any other color chances are it's not a diamond. Uh, if you see a blue tint in the diamond, it's probably not a diamond. Diamonds aren't blue, diamonds aren't pink or red or yellow, pretty yellow, good looking yellow. Um, diamonds are clear. That's what they're supposed to be. Now you see these ads and stuff for chocolate diamonds and, and, and all these other different color diamonds. All that is, is a jewelry store trying to get you to buy the crap diamonds that they couldn't sell that were clear. It, it, I, I hate to put it that way, but that's basically what it is. Um, they're not worth any more, they're actually worth a lot less, because they generally will add color to them to hide imperfections, to hide the real, real bad imperfections, something that they just can't, something that they can't sell. Uh, it has too many imperfections, so they'll hide it with a color. So if your diamond is anywhere from clear to like a dirty yellow, chances are it's it's a real diamond. Uh, obviously, the more clear it is, the more it's worth. The more dirty yellow it is, the less it's worth, and they just don't look that good anyways. They really don't. The inclusions are going to be black. They're little black specks, almost look like black pepper. and they'll be in just about every diamond. Sometimes you'll see them, even with the loop, sometimes you won't see them, that don't mean they're not there, that just means that they're good enough to where you ain't gonna have to worry about seeing them. It's really up to you on your level of comfort for the price that you're paying. Just about every pawn shop is gonna have a nasty, dirty diamond. That doesn't mean that it ain't a diamond, it just means that it's a nasty, dirty diamond, that's all it means. They also have these things, they're, they're diamond testers, and they work for the most part. If it's an obvious cubic zirconia or, or something like that, it's not gonna register as a real diamond. A lot of them do have a little bit of trouble registering between a moissanite and an actual diamond. Uh, your best bet to try and tell those two apart, if it looks too fiery, if there's too many different kind of colors in that diamond, chances are, this isn't 100% accurate, but chances are, it is a moissanite and not a diamond. And those are a lot, lot, lot cheaper than actual for real diamonds, even lab grown diamonds. So that's really the only difference that I can give you. And some of the moissanite will actually have a little bit of a blue tint to them, but that's not, I mean, if it has a blue tint, it's not a diamond. Anyways, that's one of the biggest uh, things in, in figuring out what's a real diamond and what's not. I think I've covered most of everything as far as the diamonds go. If you stumble upon this video, even after Valentine's Day or anything like that, and you have questions, go ahead and put them in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them to the best of my knowledge. Uh, I do have a couple people I can ask if I don't know the answer. Um, so 
I will do my best to find the answer for you, just so you know. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions, go on and throw them in the comment section. Uh, next, I'm gonna move on to gold. Gold is a lot, a lot, a lot easier to tell apart uh, and to, to discern real from fake. Uh, honestly, if it looks too yellow, it's if it looks like mustard yellow, it's not real gold. Now past that, there are a couple things that you can do to buy used gold from a pawn shop. If the pawn shop is buying gold and they have a lot of it, chances are they have these little vials, they're just gold testers, it's just different levels of acidity uh, that tests the that tests gold. And I say different levels because they have it has different strengths for 10, 14, 18, and 24 karat. Now, the higher up in carat gold that you have, the more yellow it will be, but it won't look, it won't ever look mustard yellow. So if it looks mustard yellow, it's fake. The test that they could do with this, uh, this gold acid uh, is basically what it is, is they could do it one of two ways. And I prefer the second way I'm gonna tell you, but you can go ahead and use your own judgment. Uh, the first way is, is they will actually scrape the side and I'll actually, I'll show you on my necklace. I don't, I'm not going to test it for you or anything, but I'll, I'll just kind of go over uh, what they'll do. Now this, this necklace is 10 karat gold. Uh, everything about it is 10 karat gold. But what they'll do is they'll actually grab a little piece of, of the gold and they'll scratch it on this stone. And what it does is when they scratch it on the stone, it will leave little bits of the gold on that stone and then what they'll do is they'll it's just a drop or two of that acid of the solution and if it starts bubbling up it's fake uh, if it doesn't bubble up then it's real the problem that i have with that test is uh it's it's two things uh one if they go a little crazy on the scratching on the stone you're gonna see little scratch marks on the side of your necklace or or whatever it is that you're buying bracelet, whatever. And two, if it is a metal that is gold plated, a lot of times if they don't go deep enough, it will actually just peel off the gold plating. And that is, the plating is real. And that will test, it won't bubble up, it won't do nothing. So that'll test good. And they can sell you a fake gold chain because underneath the plate could be anything. It could be stainless, it could be sterling, it could be brass, it could be anything. Uh, so that's part of the reason why I don't like that test. Use your own judgment however you want to do. The second, the second way that they can do that test is, and the way that I used to do it, is especially on uh, a link chain like this or even a rope chain, those work really well too, is if you get inside a link, like right in this area, I, I really hope you can see it, but if you get inside a link and then you just actually take a nail file and you file into it a little bit, and then you drop the the gold tester on it. That way, you kind of dig into the metal, whatever it is underneath. And if it's fake, it'll bubble up. If it ain't fake, then it won't do nothing. It won't do anything at all. I prefer that method a little bit better just because it actually gets into the metal. And also, you can actually look at it too. I mean, once the stuff is, is washed off of it, you don't want to touch it you don't want to touch that uh, gold acid stuff because it actually turns your skin yellow. Trust me. <laughs> but you can actually inspect the necklace. They should let you. I don't see why they wouldn't. And they should show you exactly where they tested it, which is what I did. And then you can actually see if the underlying layer of metal is, still looks the exact same as the top layer same color same everything just maybe a little scratched up then you're fine it's real gold you're good to go if it's lighter chances are it'll it'll be a silvery color underneath or if it's a darker like brass type color then obviously it's a plated chain and you don't want to pay gold prices for that now if you want to pay you know a plated price for it if you want a plated chain then then that's on you buy what you want i just want you to know that I just don't want you to get taken. I don't want you to spend hundreds of dollars on a plate of chain because it ain't worth it. I, I really hope that this helps someone out there, helps a few people. Maybe if you could save a hundred bucks, that would be awesome. Uh, I, I know buying jewelry is, is, is nice to do for whoever it is that you're buying it for, but at the same time, you don't want to spend 
you know, a year's worth of your salary on something that honestly really isn't worth it. I hate to say it that way, but it's true. Uh, I mean, at retail, it's not. That's not to say that what you buy at the pawn shop isn't going to fetch a nice appraisal. Uh, so just keep that in mind. If you're looking to buy jewelry just to have it somewhere, just to have something valuable in a safe or something, get it appraised after you buy it. You might be surprised. Uh, anyways, a couple things to remember. As far as diamonds go, if it looks too perfect, probably not a diamond. Uh, if it does look insanely perfect, chances are there is a serial number uh, associated with that diamond. And hopefully the place that you're at, pawn shop probably, hopefully they have the paperwork for that diamond. And if they do, they are going to charge you a little bit more for it. So still expect to pay more for it. You're just not going to pay retail prices for it. Or you shouldn't. If you are... If they're charging retail prices, walk away. Uh, all diamonds have inclusions. Most all diamonds have inclusions. Uh, you can always ask t uh, for the for a loop to look at the diamond. Just look all over the diamond. Even if you turn the ring sideways, if if the the setting is open, you could turn the ring sideways and look at the sides of the diamond too. Just look everywhere that you possibly can on the diamond to find whatever you can find whatever you can see if it looks like broken glass if it looks like pepper uh, those are inclusions uh, imperfections in the diamond that's not to deter you that basically tells you that it's a real diamond uh, so don't let a little bit of inclusions imperfections sway you from buying a used diamond also diamonds range from clear to a dirty yellow if it is basically any color than that it still could be a real diamond, they, it's just artificially colored. If it tints towards blue, not if it's like a crit blue diamond, <laughs> but if it tints towards blue, chances are it's not a real diamond either. Stay away from it. If it's a little too sparkly, too fiery, too many colors inside the diamond when you're looking at it, chances are again that it is not a diamond. Uh, like I said, diamonds clear to dirty yellow. Uh, gold, if it looks like mustard, it's not real gold just have wherever it is that you're buying from have them test it if you're in a retail jewelry store they don't need to they're not going to sell you fake when testing gold or whether it's a necklace or a bracelet or whatever uh when testing gold don't let them because they'll test it for you they, they won't ask you to test it if they do walk away you don't want to do that uh, anyways but when they test the gold don't let them test the clasp because a clasp can be easily replaced uh you could put a 10 karat gold clasp on a fake chain and if they test the clasp, then it's going to test as real gold and they're going to try and sell you a fake gold necklace at a real gold price. Another thing I do want to tell you before I wrap this up, this is just kind of general across all pawn shops. Um, but if you don't go in them a lot, you might not know. And that is that a lot of them, the prices on whatever it is that they're trying to sell isn't firm. So if the price on a ring that you're looking at says a thousand bucks, play with the price a little bit. You know, don't don't just say, hey, okay, here's a thousand bucks. If you want to pay the thousand dollars, if you feel it's worth it, then by all means, go for it. Uh, you're paying less than you are in, in, in the jewelry store anyways. But just know that you can probably haggle the price a little bit, even get a couple hundred dollars off of the price, especially if it's, it's higher up there. You could probably play with the price a little bit. Uh, almost no pawn shop is going to have... Uh, their stuff marked at what they actually want to sell it for. It just doesn't happen. There's always a little bit of wiggle room in the price. There are some that, you know, the price on the tag is, is what you pay. If they don't come down on the price, then they don't come down on the price and you just gotta figure out if it's worth it to you or not. Uh, but as long as you've basically kind of followed along with what I've said here, I think you should be okay in, in buying something that you that you can feel confident in is authentic and real and not a fake. Uh, so, like I said many times before, if you have a question, please throw in the comment section. I will do my very best to answer any question that you have about this video. <laughs> I don't want to leave that door too open. I, 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 sorry, I saw things in my head that, anyways, <laughs> that does it for this video. Uh, I will see you guys in the next one. I'm out.